first of all, I think we have to say, absolutely, the, the Holy Spirit is not a third person. There are two persons who send greetings in all the letters, the Father, who is God, and the Son, and he's the, the Father, he's the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Incidentally, our Lord tells you Jesus couldn't be Yahweh, because you cannot say our Yahweh or my Yahweh. But leaving that aside, the Holy Spirit never sends any greetings, is never worshipped, and never prayed to. The Holy Spirit is therefore not a third person. The Holy Spirit is God or Jesus indistinguishably in their operational presence and power manifested in different ways, either doing miracles, helping us out in situations, working with us. The operational presence and power of God the Father or Jesus, since the time of Jesus that is, very personal. You can think of human beings as very personal and having spirit. My spirit is coming to you now. I'm located here. My spirit comes to you across through this, by this miracle of, of streaming and so on. Not impersonal, I think, at all. Not just power like a socket in the wall. Heaven forbid, very personal. You can't grieve something that's impersonal. It says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. That's, don't grieve God or Jesus in their outreach, in their ambiance, in their mood, in their presence with us. Where shall I go from your spirit, David says, in one of the Psalms. If I go hither and thither, I will not get away from your spirit, because your spirit is everywhere. God's mind is able to be connected and observant of anything that's happening. Jesus also is searching the hearts and the minds like some sort of x-ray power watching us. But it's not a third person, however, it's very personal. We made the mistake, I think, sometimes to say, well, the spirit is strictly power, impersonal. No, no, power, yes. Operational presence, very spiritual, very personal, but not a third person in the sense that the father and son are distinct persons. They're not the same person, evidently, because no father can be his own son. Two persons are there, father and son, and their spirit is their combined operational presence and power. You'll find that in most of the textbooks. Take the big Bible dictionaries, look up the word spirit. You'll find that well uh, documented. One final thing, even in 325 when they came up with the Nicene Creed on the Trinity, they were undecided as to what to do with the Holy Spirit. They simply said, we believe in the Spirit. Even in 385, church fathers said, we're not sure about the Spirit. So it was only four or five hundred years later than the time of Jesus that they began to solidify that spirit as being a third person. One other point is that in 1 John 2, 1, the mediator, the parakletos, the comforter, is said to be Jesus himself. I see. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going away, but I'm coming to you in the form of of the mediator, the parakletos, the comforter, and that comforter is said to be identified with Jesus in 1 John 2 verse 1.